Mark Fisher earlier, and they, deservedly, I think they should be ranked, and that's, a, that's an accomplishment for the players. I know the coaches don't think that much about it, but when you're out there playing and you're in the top 25, it's, it's a big thing that you'll be able to say later in your life, that, hey, I was ranked. Underneath to Green for Jimison with the opening block of the game. Well, you're going to certainly have to limit their scoring possessions if you want to have any chance here to win. How do you like this? You got Ray Hahn on Johnny D. Two, two guys that played here in San Diego, two local high school product guys, and great matchup. This is Anderson. Aztecs lead the all-time series 25 to 17. They've won five straight in the series. Opening shot of the game, Johnny D. Knocking it down, Torero's out to a 2 0 lead. And you're going to see a lot of that tonight. They're going to start a lot of picks for Johnny D. Get him open, see if he can really get things going offensively for the Torero's. And how often do you rely on a freshman on a Division I level? And a foul. And boy, less than one minute in, 55 seconds in, Bill Greer decides, I got to get Chris Manresa into the game. You know, this will be interesting to see if Steve Fisher. We'll get the ball down to Garrett Green to go right at Chris Manresa to say, OK, let's see how healthy he really is. They trap and a steal. USD a chance to take a 4-0 lead. Guiding in for the easy lay-in, the senior Darian Norris. And you got young, inexperienced kids out there that are going more of a, against a veteran team. They don't know any better. They're going to play at a high level. They're going to play defense. And can you keep it up the whole night is the key. At one point of the first half last year, Vieja Serena, the Toreros were up seven at 25 to 18. Green comes up empty. You can see they went right at Chris Manresa, Steve, and let's see how healthy that back is. Chance to open up 6 nothing, much like Cal did on Sunday. Here's Kramer with a right hand. Well. We now know who showed up to play at the start. <laughs> this is the exact situation San Diego State was in at home on Sunday against Cal. They did rear off the next seven points. Tapley with a jumper. How about that play by Chris Ta uh, Chase Tapley? He actually got the ball smacked on the way up before he let it go, but he has really elevated his game, not just physically, but mentally, which has made the biggest difference. That's going off of Manresa and the first turnover of the game for the USD Toreros. One thing the Toreros have to do, Steve, they've got to limit their turnovers. They've got to get as many quality shots as possible, and that's one of the big concerns for Bill Greer that his team this year has been turning the ball over too much. And they've got to stay patient on offense, too. He thought against Irvine when they lost by 20 on Saturday night that they shot way too quickly. But that, I think, is to be expected when you've got so many freshmen and so many young guys playing in your rotation. Here's Shelton. He'll take the jumper as D released on him. And it's Johnny D away with a rebound. He's their leading score at 13.7. He's got four to start this thing. You know, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think Steve Fisher's probably going to make a substitution here. He doesn't like what he sees. Guys are a little bit flat coming out. Might have taken this game a little bit lightly to start with. So maybe get a couple new guys in there to get the, get the temperature up, get the intensity up. You know, this is a fairly new building, and every game played in this building has been pretty tight in the city championship. Green misses again. We've only had one decided in double figures. That was 10 points a few years ago. Other than that, it's usually by five, seven. City championships, I mean, it's, it's a pride thing. It's a bragging rights thing. So guys play at a higher level. And it helps here for the Toreros that they're trying to score right in front of their student section. This is Manaresa bumping on Green with the left hand. Got his own offensive rebound. Put it up and scores it. Toreros are just outplaying the Aztecs in the paint, getting more offensive rebounds, not giving up, and they've taken advantage of it. The Aztecs have made one of their first five shots. Meantime, San Diego, five of six from the floor to open up. This high screen and roll play that the Aztecs do so well. Well, the big man for the Toreros, and Kramer got caught there, just can't get out and hedge it quick enough. Credit Chris Memresa not giving up. Went with the left hand, gets the offensive rebound, goes back up strong, gets hit. This is what Bill Greer needed from Chris Memresa tonight. Be able to control the glass as much as possible for the Toreros to keep them in the game. How long will the back hold up? 
Alec Williams checking in early and turns it over. Too hard of a pass on the baseline to Chase Taplin. And that gets us to our first break. I don't think anybody expected this on either side. 15-53 to go opening half of play. The Toreros lead it 10-2. Terreros by eight. Before the ball game, Steve Fisher told me that Johnny D is going to make the Aztecs feel like, hey, why didn't you recruit me? Why am I playing in a blue uniform instead of black? Well, if they're going to leave him open like that, he's going to let it go. And you can see he's fearless. He'll pull up from anywhere. But coming off the screen is what he's so good at. He's able to keep it tight. And that's all you got to do is just get him a little opening. And he can let it go at five foot ten. They got him listed at six foot. Hold on now. No. Uh -uh. But you know what? That, that size doesn't matter. You can get rid of the ball. You can get rid of the ball. He averaged 32.8 points per game last season at Rancho Buena Vista. That's Anderson, highly regarded freshman point guard out of Anaheim Canyon. That's the sixth rebound right there for USD. The Aztecs yet to grab one in this game. I'm really surprised here. Terrell's just out hustling the Aztecs to the ball, and especially off the glass. This is D with the right hand. He's got six. He's got those little moves. You know, he went actually to his left, but shot the ball with his right. So it's hard to cover that. And you got a guy that's a little, as I said earlier, the herky jerky, and he can shoot from any different angle. And he's a scorer. This is where they got trouble. They're going to see that double team down here because he's smaller. They're going to post him up. That was the first touch of the game for Jamal Franklin. Here's Williams from the baseline. Rebound Manaresa. He's averaging close to a double double this season. 11 and a half points, 9.3 rebounds. Manaresa to put him up 12. Nope, but a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. One thing Chris Manaresa does very well, he's patient down on the block, Steve. He'll wait to see if there's a double team coming. He'll look around. If there's nothing there, he can make a move. What a nice little drop step. And Creates the foul against Alec Williams. That's a mismatch right there. Williams does not see much time in games, especially of late. It's now 13 to 2 after Manaresa sinks the free throw. This, by the way, USD team, not a very good free throw shooting team. They've struggled at the line this season, just shooting 63%. You can't do that at this level. That's going to come back and bite you. You're going to lose a lot of games on that free throw line. You got to get that up in the 78, 80 percent, because you can win a lot of tight games with two minutes, a minute left to go from that free throw line. The Aztecs were favored by 13 and a half. They find themselves down 12 at 14 to two. This is Thames, and Thames draws the foul. One thing, Xavier Thames, young man from Sacro, Cal Cal California, he's able to get into the paint. He uses his speed and his quickness, but. He can do things like Charles Barkley used to do. He'll create the foul, create the contact, jump off, and then let the ball go. Very athletic, 
knows what to do when he has the ball down there close to the basket. Of a little bit of concern, you're up 14 to three right now, but as John Sinis comes in, the redshirt freshman out of Greece going to the bench is Dennis Kramer. He just picked up his second personal foul. Thames made them both. It's a 10-point game at 14-4. Here comes the pressure. San Diego State's very good. They'll look around to see if they can double team you in the backcourt. They're one of those teams, too. They get a double team, a couple of them in a row, string together four or five points, and they're right back in it. Oh, they're so good at it. Steve Fisher does such a great job in getting guys to you know, disguise their full court defense. And a block. Franklin blocking D and then picking up a foul. That's going to go against D. There's the difference. Try to get around the screen. He's got the ball, but he didn't release it quick enough. A little faking. Jamal Franklin's just too quick. He's got two long arms, and he's going at six foot five against somebody five foot ten. He's going to have an advantage there. So he's going to learn. Trust me, this is going to be a great ball player, Johnny D. In the next couple of years, you watch how he develops. Played less than six minutes to open this game. Has six points. He'll go to the bench. Franklin, the short little jumper missed. And a rebound, Ken Ransifer. Another rebound for USD. The play is dead. Garrett Green will come back in. Tim Shelton as well. Ransifer in the lane, lost it. Tapley away with it. Here's Tapley for three. You betcha. Uh, he shoots so much better on the road than at Viejas, averaging 20.3 points on the road and a foul against Xavier Thames in the midcourt. Well, uh, one thing Tapley's so good at is he'll trail the off the uh, fast break and he'll just wait because the speed of all of a sudden the Aztecs get the steal going. He'll get the ball up and he'll just trail and just wait till everybody gets down too low and he just sets himself up, squares him, squares up those shoulders, and he's an excellent three-point shooter. A moment ago, the Aztecs were down 12. They're now down seven. And what do I talk about? Those steals, right? They can get right back in it. Franklin away with it, but then he threw it away. Well, that's kind of been the M.O. of Franklin this season. You make a great play, and then at times he can disappear and do something silly, and not sure he had to rush that right there. Now, you give up a little bit of control and put Jamal Franklin in, but his athleticism, his energy, his passion is so infectious that, you know, you're willing to live with some of those mistakes. Exactly. And this was a kid 20 minutes before the Cal game on Sunday. He couldn't see because of a migraine headache. Then he goes out and plays just a fantastic game. You credit Steve Fisher and his staff that this team has played an incredible schedule and they've done extremely well. Manresa put it on the floor with five to go on the shot clock, forced it up. Thames says the rebound. This is where the Aztecs are good when they have numbers. Franklin, the corner to Tapley, put it up short. Not sure if he was trying to draw a foul there. Down low it goes to John Sinis. Freshman from Greece, 10 points at UC Irvine. Gets a what, bucket there. Chris Anderson's playing with his head up all the time. And he's, you know, even though he's giving up some size and strength, his quickness pushing the ball up has gotten the Terrell has a lot of easy buckets. Here's Tapley from the elbow left. We well, just wonder why they just don't run him off of screens or run him off the Ball screens, high post, low post, and just get him the ball until you can stop him. Seven already for Tapley early on in this one as we approach 11 and a half to go. James Rayhound's going to come in for San Diego State when play is dead. Anderson with the crossover dribble. Trails seem to be a little bit slow getting in their offensive set here. From the wing, left side. That was Darian Norris, a miss, got his own offensive rebound. Soft touch won't go, but speaking of offensive rebounds, there's Chris Manresa. Boy, Bill Greer's got to be just elated that Chris Manresa's been able to go this long with his back being as bad as it is. Hey, you dig down in the city championship time, you know? You got to come through for your team. Now they're killing him on the glass, 11 to 2. And they're going to get another offensive rebound, or another rebound, that is. 
This is Anderson. Rancifer for three. And that would have put him up 21 to nine. Green. Xavier Thames, he is so good at running the floor. And if you run the floor with him and get your head up, he's going to get the ball to you. That's one thing I feel the Aztecs haven't lost from last year that much at all. Their ability to get up the floor, eyes up, get some easy buckets also. Bigger advantage in this game on the bench would go to USD. Sinis over the double team. That's a good move by a redshirt freshman. That kid played in Europe for the Greece under-18 team. It's been all Toreros. Chris Manresa wasn't sure if he was going to play. He's paying dividends. Terreros by nine, 10.04 to go in the opening half of play. They've been up by a dozen in this game. I talked to Bill Greer yesterday. He told me, we just want to compete in this game. His guys are. Well, they're competing, and they're competing with a lot of intensity. And right there is what the referees are looking at to figure out, was that intentional? Which we over here are saying, really? I don't, I don't think it was intentional. He just turned, and Xavier Thames just wasn't as big and had his face in the wrong place. So this will be interesting to see. The referees are gathered right by us to decide what, what they should do, and I don't even think the Torero staff, coaching staff, knows yeah. what's happening. Well, they haven't taken the points off the board at all. It, it remains 20 to 11. Would they call him for a technical foul after giving the basket? They can't do that, though. It's before the shot. It could be called a flagrant foul where you would get two free throws and the ball, and it'd be interesting to see if they counted the two points that was made. Our official tonight, Frank Harvey, Michael Irving, and Kevin Brill. Nice little ball fake, little drop step, and got his elbow up high. So this will be interesting. Now the referees are going to get together. Bill Greer and Steve Fisher decide what's going to happen here. Well, maybe they'll say, hey, guys, let's settle down with uh, throwing the elbows in that. I just don't think that that was intentional at all. You know, he just had the ball up high, and which is what you're taught to do, and even the players are talking about it right now at half court. Now, as mentioned, the points are still on the board. Steve Fisher arguing to no avail. And I'm sure everyone in the building saying, you know, what, what are the referees at half court? What are they talking about? So they might just so they count will, the They basket. are going to count the basket. They're going to let him shoot two free throws here. They're going to I believe Xavier Saines. They're going to let Thames, Thames shoot two free throws. 
All right, so we've sorted it out. Count the basket. It's 20 to 11. Flagrant foul against John Sinis. So Thames gets to go to the free throw line for a couple. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The, fra the flagrant foul actually coming before the shot was released. And then counting the basket at least. And as well, the University of San Diego is going to watch SDSU get the basketball. This could be a big uh, turning point right here because it's nine points. Now you got a chance to shave it down to as little as five. Trails look like they're going to come out in a little one-two-two two zone. Okay, you give a different look to the offense. See if they can handle it when they come out. Got LeBradford Franklin, Franklin out there. See if he knows what to do offensively. Franklin's minutes on the floor have gone down considerably since the Baylor game. Off the mark is Thames. Another rebound for USD. Anderson grabbed it and then was fouled. Jamal Franklin got him. I, I do like the intensity so far. Yeah, yeah. The smallest guy on the floor goes up, goes up high and gets the rebound. Christopher Anderson, go up there. And then, see, that's the type of play right there that I'm sure the coaching staff from the Aztecs, why, why foul there? There's no reason to. You weren't going to get the ball. And, and they need Jamal Franklin on the floor. You don't want him to get the silly fouls. This is how the Aztecs get back in the game. Their, their defense can create offense, and they're just waiting to see if they can get a steal or two here. That's Miles into the ball game. Seven-point advantage for the Toreros. They have led throughout. They took a 6-0 lead, built it up to 12. They were in it for much of the first half and half of the second half last year at Viejas Arena before finally wilting and losing by almost 30. Sinis with one to go on the shot clock. Franklin away with the rebound. And that's why I think the Aztecs need to take advantage either on the fast break or the secondary break, get the ball in the paint, or create something to the basket, because the trails just aren't as fast getting back. They just haven't taken advantage of it yet. Coming up on 10 to go on the shot clock. Tapley releases. He now has nine. Well, he has been something else. 25 against Cal on Sunday on 10 of 17 shooting. And a foul away from the basketball. Going against San Diego State. Deshaun Stevens, junior college transfer out of Santa Monica, getting whistled for his first. I'll tell you what's interesting is there's such a mismatch right now with John Sinis and Rayhan. And Treos just can't seem to find it. And a five second violation against USD. Saw a shot of Johnny D there a moment ago. He's now been on the bench for close to six minutes. Chance now for San Diego State to get it within three, perhaps two. Here's Franklin. He'll try a three. Their answer for the rebound. Franklin's been a real good three-point shooter here in his sophomore year. Driving in Anderson, and he draws a foul. Well, Bradford Franklin's going to pick that one up. That's kind of been his problem this year, picking up some, some fouls. Coming into a game quickly and turning it over and turning over the momentum. Well, I think Bill Greer told his team, if you get the opportunity to get to the basket, get to the paint, you can create a foul, do it. But if not, I want you to back it out, take your time, take some time off the clock because you don't want to get into a running game with the Aztecs. You want to try to control the tempo because this team is so explosive. D spent six minutes on the bench. He's back in, replacing Ken Ransifer. And a team that shoots 63% from the free throw line in their first seven games. A perfect four for four to start this one. And the lead is back up to seven at 22-15. This does not look like the team coming off a 20-point defeat at the hands of a previously winless UC Irvine team on Saturday night. You realize they were down 38 points in the second half? It's all the psychology of playing, baby. It's all the mindset. 
That was last touch by Miles, and we have a timeout on the floor. Seven minutes, 49 seconds to go before halftime. The Toreros have led every second of this game. They lead it by seven. They're playing for bragging rights of America's finest city. As you take a look at the downtown skyline, we welcome you back to Jenny Craig Pavilion, where the USD Toreros have led from the start. They've got a seven-point advantage with 7.49 to go in the opening half. And the littler, more inexperienced team with freshmen <laughs> out-rebounding a, a much bigger Aztec team, 14-4. to four. The little engine that could. You got Chris Anderson, 5'7". That's a generous 5'7". He's the leading rebounder in this game with four already. 150 pounds? Where? Now, come on. But you got to love it. He's tenacious. He's down there. And credit to Terrell. As you watch when there's a rebound, there's four white jerseys in the paint going after the ball. This is the way the game started last season before the Aztecs came back and won 77-49. There's Tapley again. He has missed just one shot so far in this game. Well, Five he, of six. He's feeling it. And I'll tell you what, everybody's been on him. They're face guarding him, trying not to let him get the ball, but he, you're feeling it. You gotta let it go, and he's doing it. This is Miles, right of the lane. Cameron Miles. 6-1 junior out of Dallas Skyline. Have you noticed that Trero's taking the ball in the basket more tonight? I have. And I haven't noticed Xavier Thames from San Diego State doing that that much. The zone might have a little bit to do with it. Here's James Rayon. He's been driving a lot more this year than shooting outside and missed it. Aztecs will retain possession with 15 to go on the shot clocks. You know, you look at James Rayon, just a, a fantastic shooter from the outside, but, he, you know, he started with his foot. He missed a couple of games. He had a bad foot. And I think that's really affected his shot overall. And this is a guy who should be about 40% from the three-point line. Tapley with just his second miss of the game. Simi for Jemison. Corral on the rebound. Yeah. Carreras on the floor going after the ball. See if the Jimison will be rewarded offensive then. Nope. Manaressa, another offensive rebound, and he gets fouled. It's the difference right now. The offensive glass by the Terreros. Getting second shots, third shots, and again, Chris Manaressa using his big body, getting in there, just getting a little bit, tipping the ball to himself, and that's experience right there. Knowing that he could just tip the ball to himself, that's two offensive rebounds. It's called padding your average, baby. He's only going to get two more shots to play in this <laughs> rivalry. He's come up empty the first two times of his college career. He grew up up the road in southern Orange County. Played at Tesoro High School. That's their first miss from the charity strike tonight. They had started a perfect four for four. And look at one Achilles heel that he has. I mean, 61 percent from the free throw line. You're a big man, and as active as he is down there, you got to make free throws. But they get another offensive rebound, and they're rewarded. But Jemison with the basket. Big man coming in there won't be denied, and just out hustled and out muscled. Garrett Green. That's all it was. 
This is about where they were this time last season, and they let it slip away. Only it was 9.4 miles across the eight at Viejas. You know, it really did him in last year, the final minute of the game, where they turned it over. Thames! Well-earned basket for Xavier Thames. Now they're starting to, to attack the basket. It's kind of been their M.O. this season. At times when they uh, get a little outside gun shot, they'll attack that basket and get back in it. Well, Darren Norris saw that, all, that Chase Tapley was open, and he had to come over and help. He saw that there was going to be an open shot for Tapley, so he came over to help. And Thames was his man. He just got caught out of position. I mean, it's going to happen. That's what basketball is. It's a disadvantage, advantage game. And a guy like Xavier Thames knows how to create fouls. He's very good at it. Thames completes the three-point play. And all of a sudden, the Aztecs are within five. And they just chip away at you, and they just wait for you to turn the ball over and try to get a double team. And Darian Norris handling the point. The only senior on this team averaging nine a game. They decide they're going to front Chris Wayne now, so it's a little bit more of a difficult pass to get him on the block. Anderson will go around that pick. Drive it in. Dish off D. Quick shot up. Air ball. The Aztecs are within striking distance. Rayhan has shot a lot of shots in this building. This is Stevens. And Green is there, but a whistle before the putback. You can see the speed and the quickness right now of the Aztecs getting down the floor. And then once they get down there, in an uneven situation, they're going to get the ball to the paint as much as possible. They're very good at it. But Jimison called for his second. They'll have to get him out. John Sinis will return to this basketball game. Terreros are in the bonus. Stevens only 22% free throw shooter. That's what you're telling your team, box out, guys. Well, he's had a few one of eight games, but what I love about this kid is, is he doesn't really do anything to impress you that you see, but at the end of the game, you pick up the box score, and he's got nine rebounds. Uh, he hustles, too. Deshaun Stevens hustles. He's very good at going after loose balls. Just his third year playing organized basketball, got cut from his high school basketball team. Only six, eight guys get cut from their high school basketball team. Somebody made a mistake. <laughs> that was up in Chatsworth in the LA City section. That's staying with USD. Now, one thing the Toreros have a difficult time with, if the clock gets down to five, four seconds left to go, they need a guy that can penetrate, get in the paint, create that shot, get to the basket. Even if Johnny D was pretty good at it, but you know, you're lying on a freshman again. Norris, free throw line jumper is good. Nice little backdoor play. Jamal Franklin lost him, couldn't find him, and always got to stay on your guy, especially the quick guards. Don't, can't lose sight of him. I don't care how good or bad you are, if you let somebody shoot 56%, they're going to hang around in a game. Green gets it to Stevens for the jam. That's what the Aztecs were looking for. They're looking for something to get him going. And that jam by Stevens might just do it. Now it's a four-point game. Manresa moving in on Green. In and out. Manresa has logged a lot more minutes than I thought with that bad back. This is Franklin. Chance to cut the deficit to two. Give and go, Tapley. There was nobody there to pick him up. And a timeout, USD. What was a 12-point advantage minutes ago is now down to two, and game on. Too big, too strong, and too fast. The Aztecs you know, finally started to get a rhythm going, and just a little, just to Sean Stevens. Great hustle by Tapley on the floor, just waited. And all of a sudden, Garrett Green falling out of bounds, and Stevens comes up and says, hello, Jenny Craig Pavilion. But again, I love this play. Just a little rub off the high screen and easy layup for Chase Tapley. 
like they've been playing three or four years together. <laughs> Who would ever know that this is just the 11th game in which Green and Tapley have been on the floor at the same time. Aztecs on an 8-2 run to close the gap to two. It's never been tied. San Diego State's never had the lead. And look at what Chase Tapley has done. Well, you got Junior will be back for another year. And he got a taste of what it was like last year, the run that they made into the NCAAs. And he knows what that's like. He knows what it takes to get there. And he wants the guys on the team to understand, hey, this is for real. If we work, we can get there. And the thing that I love about Tapley is he went from the fifth option last season to the first option this season when it comes to scoring. There are not many guys that can do that. Great point, and he's able to handle it. Well, didn't complain the first two years. Now taking advantage of his opportunities here. Here's Norris to put him back up four. Well, they just will not miss. Darren Norris again. He can do some of those shots, little fadeaways. He's quick enough. He can stay up with the Aztecs, get in the paint, like you saw that right there. This is what the Aztecs are very good at. Two high screens. Franklin, Sinis, got all ball. Stevens put it up and won. Like I talked about, he is great on the offensive glass, getting little garbage shots. He doesn't give up. He's relentless. He pursues things. He's persistent, and he's going to get rewarded for that. He's tough to box out. How about Deshaun Stevens getting the Aztecs back in the game? There hasn't been a road venue. Chase Tapley has not enjoyed shooting in so far this season. Sampling small, but he's good. Well, Steve, one thing he does, he comes down. Look at the rotation on the ball. Perfect rotation, and that's what a shooter does. A guy that can all of a sudden see the seams through the air or feel the seams when he has it on his hands, and he's able to get that type of rotation. It makes a difference when it hits the rim, and Chase Tapley has just uh, worked on it all summer, and he's bearing the fruit now, baby. He's six of eight from the floor. The rest of the team, four for 16. And now as Deshaun Stevens goes for the free throw line, he's got an opportunity to get it down to a one-point game. Matt rest of the rebound. Guerrero's 13 of 24 from the floor, 54% clip. This is D, 10 to go on the shot clock. He launches. Wow, I didn't think that had any chance of going in when he left his hands. Just got a little bit of a screen, and he just lets it go. It, there's no range for him. You yeah. can tell. He doesn't care about where the line is, the three-point line. I figure it's out. I have the ball. I can let it go. He is something special. That was 32.8 last season at RBV. Franklin with a bump, no call. He gets it to fall. Anderson has to hurry to get it back into Johnny D. Coming up on two to go in the opening half of play. Terreros have never trailed. D 
D lost a handle on it, was on the floor with Rahan, and D grabbed Rahan on the arm. They're going to call Johnny D for the personal foul, and that is going to be the second on D. Well, down low, Jamal Franklin figures he's got an advantage. You see him just put the arm around there. I'm surprised the referee didn't see that, but two veteran players going <laughs> against each other, although one's six foot five, the other's six foot one. It makes a difference. James Rayhound to the free throw line now. A one and one. One thing Steve Fisher's so good at is teaching his players during the game, getting them to calm down, letting him know what he wants from them exactly. And you look at his record over the years and NCAA championships, NIT championships. Stevens, no look, and one. Again, Sean Stevens, I told you earlier, he picks up the little garbage type shots and he's able to execute. And his production per minute is amazing. But again, right there, just simple box out. And Chris Manresi just gets caught on the bad side. But credit to Deshaun Stevens for not giving up. And we are even for the first time tonight at 2.04. 33-33. Chase Tapley will come in after the breather. USD led by 12. It's shaping up the exact same way it did at Vieja Serena last season. Although I have more confidence in this Torero team this year. And a steal. Intercepted by Franklin. Tapley will lay it in. There's the speed and the quickness. Just don't understand that you've got to make your pass a lot quicker through the air and the distance is too far. And Jamal Franklin is just too fast. First lead of the night for the Aztecs. They're on a seven-nothing run. And you can tell what it's done. The defense of the Aztecs has picked up, Steve. That's where they're dangerous. They can create offense off their defense. Here's Anderson running the baseline. And another turnover. Tapley ahead to Franklin, and they're going to turn it back over. Well, if you go back to last season, in that final minute of the first half at Vieja Serena, USD was going to go into the half with the lead, and then they turned it over in two crucial times, and James Rahan buried a big three, and that was it. Lights out for USD. They never could recover. Now you can see what happened. All of a sudden, the, they lost tempo. They lost control, and that's what the Aztecs want you to do. Ah, but there's Norris. That'll count as two. We're back even. You're going to need the senior leadership of Darian Norris to calm things down and get the bucket you need or at least run through your offensive set. They're going to need to stop here. LeBradford Franklin with a bucket from the wing. Franklin twisted his ankle in the Cal game when Harper Camp fell on him. Limited practice this week. Scores there. Here's Anderson. About a 10-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Quick. Norris launches off the mark. Ball is loose. Rancifer tries to save it and goes into the front row. That's going to be San Diego State basketball with 11.5 to go. Now that's the part I was talking about. You just can't launch something. You got to get somebody going to the basket because you, you get a higher percentage shot. You can get someone into pain, create a foul maybe, or somebody's got to help out, maybe an offensive rebound. That's the one part the Toreros need to find someone that can really create something to the basket. Well, you were talking about defense, and they've certainly stepped up the defensive intensity. Chase Tapley right here in the steal. So Jamal is playing the passing lane, and Chase Tapley knows how to score. And this is where I was telling about their defense can create such great offense for them, and they can do it in spurts. Like you talked about the 7 0 run that they've had. That, that's where they're so dangerous. They're never going to be out of a game this year. Yeah. Never. They're never going to be out of a game. That play he made against Cal on Sunday. Cal's on a three on one. It's a one point game. And he anticipates the alley oop. He grabs it out of the air. So Cal's on the three on one break, grabs it, goes back the other way, scores. Tim Shelton takes a charge on the other end. Rather than being down a point to Cal, they're up three and they got the ball. That and Cal never, never had the momentum again. And that comes from him playing in so many games last year at such a high level on the national level is why that happened. 
Great point. Now the Aztecs. It's LeBrad for Franklin turning it over. Here's Anderson. Put it up. And he got fouled. 2.7 seconds to go. He'll have an opportunity at the free throw line to get this thing even. How about Chris Anderson? Fearless play going in against three of the Aztecs. And he's figuring, OK, I'm going to get hurt. Great steal here, triple team. And here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going in, and bam. But that's what you have to do. you got to create the contact and take the hit. I love the athleticism of USD. There's some energy in the building, and they seem to be feeding off of it for one point game. And I was here for the Montana game. There wasn't that many people here. They played well for about the first 30 minutes or so, let it slip away. You can tell they're, they're starting to feed off the crowd. Oh, that sixth man is huge. Tapley from half court, and no. And oh, what a first and half at the 43rd annual city championship. That man, Chase Tapley, with 16 of the 37 points for San Diego State. The Aztecs were down as many as 12. They never led until the 148 mark in the first half. And as we head to the break in the city championship, it's all you could ask for an entertaining game. Aztecs by a point. Coach Fisher, at eight and two right now, I think maybe a lot of people from the outside. Stevens now starting the second half in front of Tim Shelton. Yeah, Tim Shelton limited to just seven minutes, didn't score in the first half, took one shot, missed it. He was really limping badly at the end of the Cal game. He really gutted out. The Creighton game and the Cal game. But Jemison comes up empty. Aztecs' first lead of the game came with 1.48 to go. There's Stevens again. A perfect four for four from the floor, enjoying his best game of his Aztec career. Well, one thing he does is run the floor well. He will beat the other big man down the floor, so you can't let that happen if you're going to stay in this game. We don't expect to see Shelton the rest of the way. This is Norris from the corner. For Jemison, the offensive rebound of the bucket. That's the seventh offensive rebound already for the Toreros. Dan Green just lost his man, and for Jemison just goes up strong and big, long arms. And this is what Bill Greer has been missing as far as he needed guys who are tough down low, big and strong. Rayhan from the outside, just his sixth three point make of the season. Two, two three point shooters <laughs> playing against each other, and Johnny D and James Rayhan saying, hey, I can do what you do. Watch. Steve Fisher admits that Rayhan's been a little tentative to start the season. He is way, way off the three-point pace. He's on pace to make only 15 this season. He made 53 three-pointers last season. Bill Greer did say, though, we have a, an ability to make cold shooters hot all of a sudden. Two to go on the shot clock. Norris releases. That did not draw iron. Talked about it earlier, you can't keep taking those long shots like that. The Aztecs will come down and take advantage of it. Here's Stevens again. He's five for five. And another and one play. What a luxury Steve Fisher has for the Aztecs to have a guy come off the bench and do what he's doing. But again, he sets the screen up high, rolls to the basket. He's missed right there. Finally gets the ball and takes the bang and able to finish the play. Semi for Jemison, picking up his third personal. Stevens, another opportunity to go to the free throw line here in this game. This will be his fifth free throw. Kramer with the rebound. Sean Stevens with 12. Tapley and Stevens, the only two in double figures. They have 28 of the 44 for San Diego State. The Aztecs have their biggest lead of the game now at six. And you got to 
you say to yourself, Deshaun Stevens coming off the bench, replacing Tim Shelton, who does so much. Garrett Green runs down the rebound off the missed shot. Rayhan around D. That's too easy. How fast did they get the ball down the floor, though? That's why they're so good at what they do. That's why Bill Greer says, I got to call timeout here. He can see it getting out of hand. He can see the flow has just changed automatically. The momentum is going to the Aztecs. What a turnaround. At one point, the Aztecs were down 12. We head to this break. San Diego State's up 8. 17-29 to go in regulation. You know they got the city championship on down in the gas lamp. The Aztecs with a 9-2 run to open the second half. And they are out to an eight-point advantage. This is the guy that got cut from his high school basketball team, Steve. Just owning the boards right now. And you look at his production per minute. This guy averages five rebounds in 20 minutes, comes off the bench, and he's got 12 already. He's yet to miss a shot. Perfect five for five. San Diego State has not missed a shot here in the second half. They're a perfect four for four in the midst of that 9-2 run. And one of the things we pointed out, James Rahan did not score in the first half. He has five of the nine to open the second half. So they're getting him involved. He's got a three. He's got a baseline runner. Rahan, Bill Greer was telling me, has shot a lot of basketballs in this arena. Kramer from the outside. He's not a bad three-point shooter. He's actually, percentage-wise, the best three-point shooter the Toreros have at six foot eleven. Really improved. He started now all eight games for the Toreros this season. Also the team leader in blocks with seven. Rayhan back-to-back threes. No. I think Toreros have to decide that they want to get into a game where you're going to pick up the, pen, the tempo and get easy buckets, or do you want to try to play a game like the Aztecs? That right there, going down on the blocks, is what Bill Greer wanted to do to start this season. Well, you can seal your man off like that. And Dennis Kramer is very good at sealing guys off. If you're just patient and wait till he gets there, give him the ball. Didn't go as planned when he had to dismiss Chris Gabriel, his 6'11 returning starting senior, four days before the opener. Thames, nice dish off. Stevens is six for six. Well, I'm sure Bill Greer and his staff never expected Deshaun Stevens to come off the bench and have this type of game. Give me that Chatworth's coach on the line. <laughs> I want to have a word of him. Norris, good no look pass to Van Ressa, and he finishes nicely. Yeah. Penetration always creates for your big man. Dorian, Darian Norris, being the senior he is, can do that. Back to a three point game. Tapley with an open look. He'll take that, knock that down all day. He's got 19. Boy, you give him that much time. <laughs> he, he ordered a coffee from Starbucks there. What a pastry. Wow. <laughs> but again, that type of penetration, you see that, and you can kick it out. It, set guy, it sets guys up. They can square up to the basket. Fourth three-point make of the night for San Diego State. And Johnny D says, I can do that, Chase. What a 
Great score, Johnny Diaz. I mean, this kid has the potential right here to start every single game at USD over four years. We're talking about like 140 games if he stays healthy and continues to play the way he has so far. The Bears want to stay in this game. They've got to be able to control the glass, the offensive glass, and keep Deshaun Stevens off it. Good defense there. They almost forced the turnover, and LeBradford check it. Xavier Thames wants a timeout. You don't see Xavier Thames, the sophomore transfer from Washington State, get tied up too many times. Yeah, but he's not used to playing against a guy five foot seven, 150 pounds that might be just as quick as you. You know, he's been seeing some big guards. We saw big guards at Cal that came in. Another big guard from Creighton he played against. So this is a little bit unusual for him, but he is a great ball handler. Well, three pointers have been the story so far in the second half. He's out there playing pig. And I'm telling you. <laughs> it looks so effortless, does it not, for both these guys? Guys like that, they're putting in a massive amount of time to have that kind of shot. You can see just when it goes in. I watch how the ball goes in. I watch the rotation. And you look at Chase Tapley, his ball has got always the correct height on it. It's got the correct spin on it. And that's what great shooters do. They, they understand how to get the ball to go through the air correctly. As takes by three, 14 44 to go in the second half. Tapley will try it again. No, oh, why not? My goodness. I mean, why not just give him the ball <laughs> every time down the floor until he misses one? Well, that's just understanding the game and how to get open. Tapley is 9 of 11 in this basketball game. D off the screen will force it up too hard. Garrett Green, the LSU transfer. He's had a couple of games this season where he's had 10 or more rebounds. Thames lost it. Manresa steals it out of the air. Anderson. When you're that small, you kind of hide behind the defense. And that's all he did is weave his way through, and nobody picked him up. And little layup. He's battle tested his brother. He's on the UCLA basketball team. His older brother probably beat him up quite a bit in backyard pickup games. Here's Thames. He's open off the Stevens screen. Offensive rebound. Tapley, why not? No, he's only his third miss of the game. I was going to get up and leave the building if he made that. Yeah, this will be interesting to see what Bill Greer wants to do. Does he want his team to play this up tempo game, which that plays right into what the Aztecs want you to do? And Ressa put it on the floor, and what a move around Stevens and Green. That's wow. vintage Chris Manressa with a little low block, drop step move, kiss it off the glass. Big man with the bad back, give me the ball. He's got double figures with 10. It's a one-point game, seven minutes gone by, second half of play. Franklin down low against D. They got the mismatch and a block from behind. It looked like it was Kramer. Franklin gets it back, fires up a three, well off the mark, and they'll let that go out of bounds. Oh, what a city championship, Jim Brogan. This is what they were looking for. <laughs> Trail and Aztecs going at it, Steve. 12.45 to go in regulation. The Aztecs 53, the USD Toreros 52. We'll return to Jenny Craig Pavilion with more of the second half after this. Aztecs by a point.
Steve Chris, Jim Brogan with you here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion 43rd Annual City Championship. Aztecs by one point. I think the Aztecs are really missing this guy on the floor right now. They're gritty, gutsy guy. I know the knees throughout his career have not been on his side. He's only played seven minutes of his basketball game. They're really missing his presence. Yeah, and, and I don't know what's happening, but uh, he is, I think, one of the most valuable players for the Aztecs because what he does, I'm sure he has four points a game, four rebounds, but the things that he takes, he's taken 13 offensive charges in three games for the yeah. Aztecs. I Six mean, against Arizona. I mean, come on, how many guys do that? He has more offensive charges than a whole team put together. Here's Manresa, and Manresa will give the Toreros their first lead in the second half. I see Tim Shelton could help you stop that. I, I agree. I mean, his presence is missed. He, I'll tell you deal. this, he would have at least taken a charge or two on Manresa down low. Definitely. At one point in this game. And he's got a lot of weight to him, and here's the mismatch right here for the Aztecs. Boy, another block underneath by the kid from LCC, Dennis Kramer. You know, what they're doing is they're pinning him down there, but Dennis Kramer knows and Chris Manresa knows, hey, my, my little guard needs some help, and I'm going back. That's the second block of the second half. You know, back to Shelton for a minute. He played 37 minutes against Cal. He was limping at the end. He's played 30 or more minutes three times this season. He, he hadn't done that since high school at Clovis West. But he will get a 12-day break after this. Tapley again. Nope, he's missed two straight now. Franklin, though, the offensive rebound in the cleanup. Make it Stevens. Seven for seven. They'll go back in the post again. Kramer was doubled. Alec Williams now getting those minutes met for Shelton. Johnny D drives in and had it blocked by Chase Tapley. Numbers the other way for San Diego State. Thames to Franklin, and they're back on time. The speed of Xavier Thames getting down the floor, and one thing the Aztecs can do, and we talked about, they can put a 7-0, 10-0 run on you real quick, and you can be out of the game. San Diego State by three. Browns just can't afford turnovers and bad shots. Rancifer off the back of the rim too hard. Tapley no look to Williams. He put it on the floor and scored it. That kills you when you're getting beat down the floor for easy laps. And the trails are out of gas. And Bill Dreher's got to call timeout. He's got to do something here. Yeah, another San Diego State run. This time a 6-0 run. Remember they started the second half on a 9-2 run. The Aztecs have led by as many as eight here in the second half, and the Aztecs doing it with defense, starting their transition. And a block there by Tapley. Next thing you know, they're off to the races, and they're very good at running great. They run their lanes very well, and Steve Fisher disciplines them on that. And look at the big man, Alec Williams, coming from all the way underneath the basket, beating your big men down there. I'm sure this is what Bill Greer is talking about right now, guys. You got to get back on defense. Yeah, because one of the game plans was to limit the possessions that San Diego State has in this game. They're not giving as many scoring opportunities. Try not to, to play a game in which you have to score 70 or 80 points. They, they want it to be back like the way USC and Creighton tried to beat San Diego State with, you know, scores in the 50s and 60s. Well, coming out of timeout, one thing every basketball team wants to get a good look and, and, and definitely score if you can. But Bill Greer just showing concern because he realizes that this could get out of hand real quick. It doesn't, you know, you look at the score and it's a three-point game. It doesn't feel like, or check it, it's a five-point game. It, it doesn't really feel like it's a, a must-make possession here for USD, but I'm thinking it may be. 
You got all this passing on the perimeter. They've got to get something either down low where a guy can make a move or penetration and a kick out. You can't keep passing out on the perimeter. Two to go on the shot clock. They might not have time to get it off. They didn't. One extra dribble there by Ransifer and a shot clock violation. That kills you. Coming out of call timeout, now you got the media timeout, and you didn't get the shot you wanted. That kills you. Aztecs by five, 10-11 to go in the city championship. San Diego State on a 6-0 run. They're going to have the basketball and their athleticism starting to take over right now, Jim Brogan. Well, it all started on the defensive end, Steve. You know, Johnny D driving to the basket, gets the shot blocked, but four of the Aztecs were right in the paint, ready to go, and they can get out on the break so quick. Two rebounds, they're down the floor, and Steve Fisher talked about it at halftime. Not only he wanted pressure on the ball full court, but he wanted pressure on the ball when the Toreros were in their half-court offense, and it's paying dividends for them. You might have witnessed the block by Tapley and the assist by Xavier Thames. Xavier Thames has nine assists already in this basketball game. We're now 30 minutes in. He leads the break so well. <laughs> he does so many things well. Here's Williams. Back-to-back -back buckets for Williams on his last two touches. I think that Aztecs just realized, hey, we got a big advantage down low. If we don't go with Chris Manresa, we can get on the other side, and we're taking advantage of it. Williams hadn't scored since the Santa Barbara game. He has two big buckets here in the second half. Driving in is Anderson. He'll draw a foul. How about the littlest guy on the floor again? We've talked about it. Going to the basket against much bigger, taller, athletic players. But if you can create that contact, it's great for young players to see this. You create contact, referees see that, you get the chance to go to the free throw line. Still an 8 nothing run now for San Diego State. Chance to put an end to it here as Anderson goes to the free throw line. It, it seems like it's been a while since we've seen the Toreros go to the free throw line. They've made five of eight here in this game. You know, when you talk about that, that's just taking too many long shots, too many quick jump shots, not getting the ball in the post. Your post players not really getting the opportunity to create fouls. And the freshman missed the first. John Sinish back in. Bill Greer's team starting to get uh, a little more international flair to it, much like St. Mary's and other teams have traditionally done here in the West Coast Conference. Sinish from Greece. One of two made there by Anderson. And Dennis Kramer played on an international team in Germany, even though he went to high school at LCC. It's changed drastically. I mean, you see, you know, even on the pro level, so many different players from overseas, and even at the college level now, you're seeing players from all over the world. Thames. Ten to go on the shot clock. Rayhan launches for three. Big possession here for USD. They get right back in this thing, down six. Nine minutes to go. 
see a difference from the first half. They're slowing things down now and trying to get a better shot. Anderson to Manresa. He's triple teamed and stealing it with Thames. Got a hand on it. Franklin has it back. A one on three and a blocking foul call. It's one thing Jamal Franklin does. If he has the ball in the open court, he's going to the basket. Don't worry about anybody else. I'm putting it up, ladies and gentlemen. And, he, and he's very good at creating fouls and getting to the basket. But San Diego State has decided to double team Chris Manresa. Turnover comes. And here comes Jamal Franklin into your living room, ladies and gentlemen. Boom, create the foul. At least this time he didn't try and throw it off the glass for a windmill jam, which steamed his head coach in the Cal game. Johnny D coming back in. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic between these two. He's got so much talent, as we've said before. He can make things happen, yet he can also fire up the message boards, can he not, by doing some silly things. Young, talented, he'll get it. And once he starts to understand the game more and more, he's going to be a very good player for Steve Fisher at San Diego State. We've already seen him throw one off the glass in the Southern Utah game that worked to perfection, but it was a one-on-three the other day against Cali. Tried to throw it up from about the free throw line and immediately found a seat on the bench. Sinis in and out. Stevens, another rebound for San Diego State. He's going to have maybe a double-double by the end of this game. Got 16 and 6 so far. Franklin lost it, got it back, muscled it up. I think that's going to be Stevens' first miss of the game. He had been a perfect 7 for 7. You can see the Aztecs now are going to front Chris Van Ressa and make him go on the backside. Norris from the free throw line extended. Back to a five-point advantage for San Diego State. He's in double figures. Third, Torero in double figures. He has 10. That's a nice play right there by Chris Tapley. And Chris Mamresa did everything he possibly could and just couldn't do much about it. He created the contact, and that's why he's one of the premier players in the Mountain West Conference. Just crazy chase Tapley. San Diego State by five at 62-57. Seven minutes, 34 seconds to go in the game. The bench scoring for San Diego State as you're looking in on their bench there. A sizable advantage over USD, 27 to 18. You have Deshaun Stevens to thank for that. Made his first seven field goals. 16 points, seven rebounds in a coming out party for the junior college transfer from Santa Monica. I know Long Beach State really wanted him badly. He came to San Diego State, choosing Steve Fisher's program over the 49ers. Alec Williams, too. Eight minutes, four points. And from a guy who hadn't scored since the Santa Barbara game, 
That was two weeks ago. Tapley makes them both. Here's one thing we haven't seen a lot. The Aztecs haven't been doing very much run and jump on the defense in the backcourt. But Shelton is so good at that, and I think they missed that. Norris taking Tapley off the dribble and gets called for a foul. We don't see that very often, but Darren Norris using his speed. You know, that's a great matchup right there. Chase Tapley and Darren Norris going at it. Played a little contact, a little bump right in front of the referee, and that's just two great athletes going at it right there. Tapley whistled for his first. Norris, the senior from Las Vegas, the only senior on this squad. Started his career at Bradley, then went to Salt Lake Community College, and now here for the Toreros, his second season. Made one of two, Alec Williams running down the rebound. Tapley launches the lob there for Franklin, and he walked on the baseline. I think they got a little too fast there. A little bit, and they kind of was on their own, and Steve Fisher a little bit concerned that guys are coming down doing something on their own. That, I'm sure that was not a set play right there. I know you had a chance to match your biggest lead at eight, but you probably should have been a little more patient for a better shot there. Now, coming up on seven minutes to go, Terreros can get this thing down to four. Sinis against Williams. Line drive shot that missed. Terrell's going to come back in a 1 2 2 zone. See if they can slow the Aztecs down a little bit. Manresa and Kramer, the two bigs, are coming back for USD when play is dead. Franklin might have walked. Instead, they'll whistle a foul against Johnny D. And for D, that's going to be his third. Jamal Franklin's just so quick, and he's able to create so much for himself. And at six foot five, you know, 200 pounds, it's tough to guard. Franklin misses the first end of two. So Jemison coming out. Rancifer coming out. Sinis as well coming out. They'll go back with uh, three guards and two bigs. This right here, those five on the floor probably would have been the starting lineup had Manresa's back been good enough. They still managed to get him in 55 seconds into the game. Franklin will sit. Thames returns. Three guards in there as well for San Diego State. Seven-point advantage. The biggest of the night has been eight for the Aztecs. The biggest overall, 12 by USD. Midway through the first half. Anderson to Manresa. Put it on the floor. Spins over Stevens. Too short. Got his own offensive rebound and the putback. Just out-hustled everybody down there. It's the first time Deshaun Stevens lost Chris Manresa. And Chris gets rewarded with the bucket. He must be sandbagging that back thing. <laughs> He's shown no ill effects right now. He wanted to play. He didn't tell anybody about it. He just didn't tell the training staff or anybody. Here's Thames driving in. Thames will get the bucket on the penetration. That's the challenge when you play against a quicker team who's able to penetrate into the paint, you know, get in the seams of your zone. Thames has seven points and ten assists. Kramer, why not? That's way off the mark. Stevens with a good box out. There were three black jerseys there and only Manresa. Well, just too quick a shot right there. No one was prepared for Kramer taking that long three-pointer and didn't have anybody even for offensive rebounding purposes. So, had to take a good shot. You're getting down here in nitty-gritty time and every shot's going to count. Thames again going in. Too hard. Numbers back the other way for the Toreros. Norris, the senior, a one on three, missed it. Here come the Aztecs. Can they convert? They'll slow it up. And Williams went in and a foul call. Offensive foul on Alec Williams. 
was interesting right there. Xavier Thames was, hold it up, hold it up, let's take it easy. And then all of a sudden, he just fires the ball in. That's an offensive charge, ladies and gentlemen. You are square, shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip. That is going to be an offensive charge. They badly needed that stop at USD. Seven point game, 440 to go. And a foul away from the basket, and they're going to get Deshaun Stevens for a push on Chris Manoresa. Well, they decide to do a little bit differently this time on a low post, post to post move to get Chris Manoresa the ball. I think Bill Greer feels that he can have some success against Deshaun Stevens down low. Only 14 fouls apiece for each team, so they, they both have some fouls to give. Carreras get a fresh 35 second shot clock. They need a basket. Norris launching over Tapley. They needed that. He's really good at taking one dribble, going straight up and straight down, very balanced. And Darren Norris got to look at this right now with four minutes left to go and decide, OK, am I going to really win this game, put it on my shoulders as the senior, and try to win it for the Toreros? I don't think anybody in this building realistically thought the Toreros would be within five at the four-minute mark. Tapley, he's grown cold. Ball is loose. D runs it down, saves it to Darian Norris. What a hustle play by the freshman D. This place would erupt right now if they make a three-point shot. Norris with the penetration. Got Thames to fall down. Manresa underneath had it blocked. That was Stevens. Great defensive play by Deshaun Stevens right there. Didn't go for the head fake and blocks the shot, and Steve Fisher decided, I'm going to call a timeout, get my players adjusted. Smart timeout right here by Steve Fisher. Now look at Stevens in the defensive effort underneath. That's a great defensive play. Kept his hands straight up. Didn't go for the fake. Great scouting right there. Knows that Manresa is a great pump fake. Kept his ground and got the block. This is a good timeout by Steve Fisher here because this is more about giving your guys some rest down the stretch because they had really, really struggled, I thought, against Creighton and Cal just trying to do everything they can to hold those guys off over the final five or six minutes of the game. He's still got a media timeout coming up here, so he'll give his guys an extra break as you look at the top performers tonight by USD. You said earlier Bill Greer wasn't sure what he was going to get out of Chris Manresa tonight. I'm sure there'll be a lot of ice on that back after this game, but 14 rebounds, nine points. And I'll tell you, I'm very impressed with what Chris Anderson, the point guard of the Toreros, has been able to control the tempo most of the time for the Toreros to keep them in this game. The last win by the Toreros in this series was a 10-point victory back in 2005 at the JCP. And what did I say when we started this broadcast is, They've only played five games since this building opened up this series here at the JCP, and they've all been pretty, pretty tight. Only that 10-point win by USD over SDSU six years ago. That was the biggest margin of victory here at the Jenny Craig Pavilion, and we've got us a five-point game here with 3.20 to go. Now this is going to come down to don't turn the ball over and who's going to make their free throws. Five-point advantage for San Diego State. Coming up on three minutes to go in regulation. Rayhan has five points in the second half. Three to go. Thames nearly turned it over. Williams, that's out of his range. Man, rest of the rebound. That's not the shot they wanted to take right there. No, I don't think so. I can't remember the last time Williams was on the floor this late in the game. Under 10 to go now on the shot clock. Here's D. D driving in, dished it out. Now Thames touched that last. There'll only be five seconds on the shot clock. USD's going to have the basketball when we return. 2.22 to go in regulation. They're not going to have a lot of time to shoot when we come back, and the Toreros will be down five.
Aztecs with a five point advantage. USD is going to have the basketball. They'll have to inbound it with only five seconds to go on the shot clock. Well, the prime player of the game brought to you by Donovan's. We have two of them here tonight. Chase Tapley, fifth time this season he's been at 20 plus points in a game. And Chris Manresa, fifth double double of the season for him. He was a game time decision with a bad back. Didn't start, came in 55 seconds in, and has 14 points and 10 rebounds. Chase Tapley is the co Mountain West player of the week this past week. And Chris Manresa coming off the bench and giving his A plus performance. Keeping the Toreros in this game. They're going to have to shoot it quickly. Want to get rid of it. Here's D launching over Stevens. Back of the rim. Ball is loose. Thames with a rebound. Well, he might have 10 assists and 10 rebounds. Toreros going to stay in this. They got to dig in and play defense now. Aztecs going to take some time off the clock. They need a stop right here. This is where the Aztecs are good in the high pick and roll. Franklin for three. You betcha. It's an eight point advantage, matching the biggest of the game for San Diego State with 140 and counting. Nearly another steal. They're going to have to call timeout. Instead, it'll be called a tie up, and it's going SDSU's way. Now that three-pointer might have just done it. We have, though, you and I have done a lot of games here at USD, and Bill Greer to our right, he can coach. And he knows with 94 seconds remaining in a game how to get his team back from down eight. But they're certainly going to need to make a stop. Got to go for some steals, or you got to go a foul. Aztecs trying to get to nine and two, man. Ressa with a foul up high. That's when your coaching staff starts looking at all the players out there on the floor and saying, okay, who's the worst free throw shooter? Yeah. Who do we foul? But you still have two fouls to give. That's just your 15 foul. Got a new 35 second clock, so I don't know how you let this go down. You got a foul. Yeah, they're telling him right now, instructing Chris Anderson to foul Thames as quickly as possible. So with 117 to go, they'll have to inbound again now. Another 35 second shot clock. Alec Williams will come back in. Well, if the Toreros don't pull it out, you do have to applaud them for their effort. After losing by 20 to a winless UC Irvine team on the road on Saturday, they really played a, a real gutsy effort here tonight. Another foul by Anderson. Now you'll send the Aztecs to the free throw line for a one and one. Save your same 30 or 72 percent from the free throw line. This could ice it right here. It's an 11 point game. Now the Aztecs are going to have 12 days off before they play on Monday, December the 19th against Riverside, their biggest break of the year. 10 point game with 116 to go and a timeout, Steve Fisher. This is going to set his defense, telling guys, hey, they're coming down, guard the three-point line. Watch Johnny D and Darian Norris. 3-3-3, three, three, three. that's what they'll be jacking up. That's it. Down by 10 with a minute 16. You got to get down and get rid of it quick and start fouling. Well, Bill Greer told me yesterday, I, I want to compete. I know this is a really darn good SDSU team that deserves to be ranked. They're 2-2 two and two against ranked teams this season. I want my young team with three freshmen in the starting lineup to compete, and they certainly did here tonight. And it's building blocks. They've got Maine coming up Saturday here at the Slim Gym, and a very good UC Santa Barbara team on the 13th. And conference actually starts early this season. They're going to be playing on New Year's Eve. They're going to have to go to Provo and play against BYU. They'll play BYU twice, St. Mary's and Gonzaga in their first seven games of conference play. Norris for three to keep a minute. Nope. Rebound Franklin, and that should do it with 107 to go. Franklin's going to be at the free throw line on the other end for a one and one after the 18 foul. Yeah, Norris got a good look at it. 
Take a look, Chris Van Rassen. Gotta applaud the effort tonight. The Aztecs will be nine and two. And with their upcoming schedule, I, I'll tell you, it's, there's a good chance they're gonna be 14 and two when they open up on January the 14th against UNLV. And there'll be a chance UNLV will be 15 and one. That's gonna be a great game. I'd highly suggest going to the ticket office to see if there's anything, you know, any scraps left. That's January the 14th. Steve Fisher, Mark Fisher, Brian Dutcher, and Tony Bland, they, they come on. From where they were last year, usually you have a dip. Last is not had a dip at all. Now we're talking 43 and 5 since the start of last season. Kramer had it blocked. Under a minute to go. Coming up for the Aztecs, Riverside on the 19th. Elon before Christmas, Redlands and San Diego Christian, and then a winless Chicago State team. Terreros will not foul. Content to run out the final 34 seconds of this one. I'll tell you, San Diego State, you know, they got a little scared in the very first half, but you know, they came out in the second half, pressured the defense, and got it going. Here's Williams throwing it up. It's loose. Norris has it with 20 seconds to go. Johnny D will pull up. That'll go for two if it counts. Got to applaud the effort of Manresa. I think I'd probably get him out of the game right now with 12.7 to go, not risk any more injury. And we're 10 seconds away from the final whistle, and San Diego State getting to 9 and 2, and the Aztecs seeing. USD get to four and four. And well, there you have it. Six consecutive wins for San Diego State in this series. That ties the school record. And next year they'll have an opportunity to reset that record and win seven straight. Uh, teams played really well. Chris Van Ressa, bad back and all. Trails did a great showing tonight, but Aztecs just too tough, too talented. In the end, it was San Diego State, a 12-point winner. It was much close than that. USD had their opportunities. They were up a dozen in the first half of play. So for all intents and purposes, a 24-point swing in this thing when it is all said and done. San Diego State is 9-2. and two. They now have 12 days off before they play next time against Riverside. It's a game you'll be able to see here on Channel 4 San Diego. Aztec 74, USD 62. San Diego State has won six straight in the city championship, and that concludes the 43rd city championship. For my broadcasting partner, Jim Brogan, I'm Steve Quist. Stay tuned now as we send it to the Channel 4 studios. Jenny Kavnar and post game.